good evening uh, everybody and uh, uh, have a nice uh, uh, april the first uh, day the, the the april fourth day and uh, unfortunately we are not uh, making any jokes uh, uh, except for this little april fish uh, that we have here and they will uh, uh, give the, le the lecture with me but today we are going to, to um, discuss about the asynchronous programming in js in javascript uh, uh, we already know something about asynchronous programming and it's, uh, uh, we, today we'll learn uh, a couple more uh, core features of the language that will help us, uh, well they will be a bit difficult to master at the beginning but they will help us uh, uh, greatly in being more efficient in the code that we write. Uh, so let's, uh, let's dig into uh, this topic where uh, actually we already know something uh, about the asynchronous programming uh, and especially uh, when we uh, learned about how the browser is working and how the event loop inside the browser is working we already know that uh, uh, we have a lot of events that are queuing up into uh, the, uh, the, um, the message queue or the event queue and uh, uh, they are processed by this uh, event loop and so the basic uh, mechanism is that of callbacks and we also um, the, uh, appreciated that this callback should be as fast as possible, as non-blocking as possible uh, and so we need to put the uh, asynchronous behavior into every action that we do or most of the action that we do just to avoid blocking and having a good uh, say, cooperation between the different uh, uh, parts of the code uh, that uh, should not block the application, should not uh, slow it down. So every time we are doing something that is not instantaneous uh, let's uh, think uh, of, uh, of putting that or executing that in an asynchronous manner waiting for the completion uh, so we uh, uh, just to, to remember uh, callbacks uh, are the basic mechanism for uh, handling asynchronous behavior uh, so for example the, the read line uh, function uh, takes uh, um, a, a callback function that will be called when the user will type something uh, in, in reply to a question. So right now we call the question uh, method uh, and we pass the, uh, um, an arrow function with that will be called back later uh, when uh, the, the answer is available and so we'll have the, 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 the goal of processing this answer. So this is great, it's simple, we used it uh, uh, in readline, we use that uh, in the browser to process events. Uh, so it's a basic mechanism, it's quite uh, easy to understand, it just relies on passing functions around uh, and the, on closures uh, to, to get the data that we need. Right. Um, there are two main issues with uh, working just with callbacks. Uh, one is uh, error handling. Uh, uh, since the callback will be called later, um, it doesn't have any direct way of uh, um, communicating the error to the caller, uh, to the point where I'm, I'm calling the, uh, the method. And um, so uh, it should try to do its best, but it can communicate with the context in which it was called. There's no standard way of uh, error handling or exception handling in, uh, in callback functions. And uh, well, there are some conventions, uh, some programming conventions. For example, uh, many uh, libraries in the Node.js environment uh, uh, require a callback with two parameters. Uh, the first parameter is the error and the second parameter is uh, uh, the, the result of the operation. So in the case where the requested operation, for example, read file, uh, generates an error, then this error is put into the first parameter. If no error is defined, so the error uh, variable will be null, then you can find the data in the second parameter. But it's just a calling convention. There's nothing uh, in the language that supports uh, uh, the management of errors and exceptions and so on. And the second problem, maybe the bigger one, bigger one is uh, the so-called uh, callback hell. Hmm? Uh, callbacks are basic, uh, but uh, every time you are defining a callback, uh, you are creating a new nested environment uh, that will be executed, a new nested scope uh, that will be executed later. So, for example, if I have a series of questions and I need to ask the second question when I receive the answer to the first one, and I ask the, the, um, the third question when I receive the answer to the second one, and so on, I'm nesting callback inside callback inside callback inside callback. And so it's very difficult uh, to keep track of what we are doing uh, when a given uh, function is being uh, called, uh, 
with which parameters uh, and uh, where, where where are all the closures here hmm? and uh, so that's uh, that generates uh, uh, code that is very difficult to maintain we saw that also in the browser when we maybe uh, want to register some event listeners but this event listener will, uh, should be registered only when uh, the uh, the page is loaded so on the window load event and so we are defining a callback for the window load event and then we are defining a callback for the click event on the button and then maybe we need to define a timeout so that uh, after we click a button we, after some time something uh, happens uh, and so on and so we are defining again callback uh, inside callback inside callback and so on uh, again this is fine it works uh, until not not much uh, long ago it was the only way of managing uh, this sort of asynchronous code uh, but uh, fortunately with the uh, ES6 uh, with JavaScript uh, 26, uh, 25, um, 2015 uh, we have a new way of doing that uh, and this new way is called promises so in the language they uh, they inserted a new feature that they called promises and uh, uh, is uh, um, is available since uh, the latest versions of, uh, of JavaScript uh, and a lot of uh, libraries are now taking advantage of this new uh, programming method so the idea is the same as callbacks uh, but uh, they they are encapsulating the functionality of the asynchronous call in a much cleaner way inside an object basically a promise is an object and this object represents uh, the fact that uh, uh, we promise to finish a task uh, and tell you whether the task was success, successful or not mm -hmm. so i promise i will create a, um, if if you ask me uh, some task to do and i'm not able to do that synchronously right now it's not an immediate task i will just return you i cannot return you the value the result uh, i will return you a promise and th that promise object will sooner or later tell you that the task is finished is completed is fulfilled or that the task has failed for some reason so it's a promise my promise that sooner or later i will tell you something about the completion of this task successful completion or uh, errors uh, that prevented the, com the successful completion and uh, so this is a standard way of doing that uh, and so encapsulating every asynchronous behavior into a promise uh, makes them more readable more recognizable and we'll see later also uh, more um, self-documented let's say so there are two phases in the in managing a promise uh, a promise is first created and then consumed so creating a consume a, a promise means uh, uh, let's like define the callback so i'm uh, uh, right now i uh, promise that something will be done so i'm creating an, a promise object and this promise object contains uh, this is just a, no, a normal uh, um, constructor function so you create a promise with a new operator promise is a function that will return a promise object and this promise object is constructed with a callback mm -hmm. so basically we are we are uh, defining an event um, a narrow function a callback function that takes two parameters uh, resolve and reject and uh, resolve is the method to be called that will be called when uh, the task is completed and reject will be called when the task is uh, um, not completed successfully so it, there were some some kind of errors so i'm creating this object and uh, um, in my code i can do what is needed and sooner or later i must call the resolve function given uh, that i receive as a parameter or the reject function again that it receives a parameter hmm. uh, so this object uh, white promise is the promise that has been created and later on we can consume this promise and so in consuming a promise means uh, um, uh, handling the results of the promise itself so uh, we have a then method that will uh, uh, define what happens if the promise is fulfilled successfully and we have a catch method that decides what uh, happens if the um, promise generates an error so whenever the promise object called the result, result function then 
the, the, at, the at the execution time uh, the, the then callback is called if I'm calling a reject uh, the catch callback is, is called hmm? so uh, at this point in this uh, statement wait promise uh, the the program will stop we stop the execution we wait uh, until uh, uh, the uh, the promise is resolved uh, or not hmm. so actually creating a promise means just creating a simple callback function here and uh, this function is free you can do whatever you want as long as you are you guarantee that you will call resolve or reject sooner or later um, in resolving usually you should return you should pass to the resolve function the the result of the function so if it was uh, some computation task uh, it will be the value of this task and so on hmm? Uh, in the other case, uh, in the case of, of the reject, usually you, you return an error message that can be used uh, for, by, the, by the caller to understand what went wrong or an object that describes the error. Okay? Uh, it, it's, it's quite free, you can return any type of object, but usually here you have a value and there you have an error string or an error object. Um, this uh, uh, this uh, value in many cases will also be a promise itself because maybe on this value you can do additional operations but we'll see that in a moment um, like like here where um, we are returning so in a function we are uh, oh sorry we, we can also create a promise by uh, inside uh, another function so uh, if we, if you want your user uh, just to call a function that will return a promise a promise is like an, any other object so you can just uh, uh, create these objects and, and can return uh, inside where's the return in statement there uh, the, the, the content of the promise itself consuming a promise so it's the second half we are creating that and we can consume that and consume a promise uh, wait promise is a promise object and we and uh, every promise has uh, two uh, different methods then and catch the two main methods are then and catch then uh, specify the callbacks to be to be called when the promise is fulfilled uh, catch specifies the callback to be called when the promise is uh, um, is uh, not fulfilled so it generates some some sort of errors mm -hmm. uh, you catch is optional uh, and uh, um, if you omit the catch, it means that in the case of error, nothing will happen. You will not be in notified uh, by your um, by your um, function, by your callback. There is also a, a third uh, method, which is uh, uh, finally. And uh, again, the, the finally method will call back a, a third function that will be executed in any case so whenever the uh, promise is completed it will call then and finally whenever the promise is not completed so it will fail it will be rejected then it will be called catch and then finally so you can be sure that finally is always executed when the promise completes uh, with a resolve or reject otherwise uh, in the case of resolve you get the then callback in the case of failure you get the catch and the interesting part uh, uh, of this method that all of all of these all three of them return promises too so you can uh, the result of a promise will call back this function and itself it will be a promise uh, that you can maybe uh, chain other information too so when uh, this callback function will be closed uh, then you can call another one so uh, this creates some uh, it's again one of the aspects that are this, uh, quite strange or difficult to understand at first sight but then it's very powerful uh, because we can get a, a promise here and then specify what happens uh, when this promise uh, is uh, uh, executed and then when this action is completed then we can do a second action when this second action is completed we can do a third action and so on hmm? uh, so for example uh, we have this function that returns a, a value 
uh, gets an issue from a GitHub repository, and uh, so the get issue will look up uh, the repository, and when this is, is finished, uh, this will be turned into a promise too, and when this promise is fulfilled, then this issue will be available, the parameter will be the return value of this method, uh, this return value is will be the parameter of this second callback, and this issue uh, is used to make a second call to get the owner. Uh, and once you have the owner, that is the return value of this function that will be turned into a promise. When this promise is fulfilled, then the parameter owner will be used as parameter to the, to the second callback and so on. So you see that we are uh, executing a series of uh, asynchronous functions, one after the other, and each one of them is just uh, chained to the, to the fulfillment of the previous one. So we are saying uh, this is a promise. When this promise is fulfilled, if it's fulfilled, execute this one. When this promise is fulfilled, execute the third one, and so on. And so we are executing sort of nested uh, asynchronous functions. So uh, every asynchronous function is only be is only scheduled when the previous one is returned. But we don't have any nesting, any uh, uh, nesting hell like we had in callbacks, hmm? because it looks like all uh, very very linear. And uh, of course, it is works uh, when then returns uh, because uh, the then method will return a promise that will contain a value, uh, and this is the value that can be used to to go on and to uh, do additional processing steps. And the catch method uh, is sort of a catch-all because uh, it will be called here if any of these previous thens will fail. So if the first fails or the second or third, this catch will be uh, valid for all the chain of thens. So we, you only need to manage the, the, the errors once and not for every single uh, intermediate step. Okay, um, this pattern is uh, very uh, popular in web programming. For example, we see uh, in a moment uh, or in a couple of lectures that uh, the fetch method uh, the fetch API is, uh, is uh, the preferred method to get external resources uh, from an external server. And the fetch API, of course, is based on promises. So when your uh, code will need to, to load a web a file from a server, for example, in reading a JSON file, uh, of those, this is a, an asynchronous operation. So the fetch will return a promise. We, we are asking the API, please get me this file. Okay, the API takes their time. And uh, when the file is ready, they will fulfill their, uh, this promise and they will call uh, the, the, the then method. Then is a, in this case, is a function that was defined here that will analyze the response code. And uh, uh, if the response uh, uh, contains some error, it will be, the, it will be rejected. Otherwise, uh, it returns a new promise. Hmm? For chaining, I need to return a promise uh, containing uh, the, the response, the response object that they just received. And this same response object, when this is solved, uh, then JSON will be uh, passed to this other callback that will extract the JSON content. And when this extraction of the JSON content is fulfilled, uh, in this case it doesn't generate any errors, it's just a basic function, uh, then you can get, uh, convert them uh, in, um, and, and print uh, the data that was uh, encoded in the JSON response and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of doing synchronous with these operations. Uh, you need that, you, you, you can see that the status and the JSON functions are not asynchronous. They just do very simple uh, operations but uh, they need to wait until the first promise is uh, uh, is completed that that's why we don't we are not writing uh, uh, calling status calling json one after the other like normal statements but we are writing them as, as chains of uh, uh, of uh, fulfillment uh, functions so they will be called one after the other but only when the promise is finished so these are simple promises because they are immediately fulfilled or immediately rejected They're, they don't imply any asynchronous computation so not all promises uh, should necessarily be asynchronous in this case they can be synchronous but uh, the general mechanism allows for both of them to be mixed together uh, normally and uh, if we have many asynchronous operations uh, 
uh, the normal chaining method so we have a promise then another promise then another promise we, I, we will wait for the first promise to be completed before calling the second one and when the second is completed then we call the third one and so on this is the, def the, the default behavior in chaining uh, but we are wasting some time because maybe there are they are parallel operations that could be uh, asynchronous operations that could be uh, executed in parallel and this is possible with uh, uh, some uh, promise uh, uh, combination methods for example the all method of the promise uh, uh, object um, will uh, uh, combine together several promises so if i have three or four different promises that can be executed in parallel you can combine them with the uh, all method that will combine an array of properties so you have an array with pro promise number one two three four you put them together into an array and uh, call the promise.all method the promise.all will create a, an overall promise hmm, that will uh, be fulfilled only when all the individual um, uh, promises in the array are all of them fulfilled and completed so basically you are creating a, a, a barrier a stop point that will wait for the completion of all of them so you are starting all of them in parallel they go on with their own time and when all of them are completed then you can fulfill your promise and we call you will call the then method that will collect all the results you see this plural of results because it will be an array of responses uh, from the different promises and even if you, if one of them uh, fails then the whole parallel fails and the catch method is called so if uh, at least one is rejected then everything is rejected uh, otherwise uh, uh, you have uh, um, um, you, you will continue with them uh, when you have all of them is finished and all of them are being positively fulfilled uh, there's also the other method is the, is the race <laughs> race means that the first one that will uh, arrive uh, will win so it uh, activates several promises in parallel and the first one to be completed uh, is the will be selected and the, the, the then will uh, contain the result of that uh, specific uh, promise uh, and all the other ones will not be considered anymore will be forgotten okay this is the basic mechanism uh, that uh, we saw here can generate some much cleaner code much order code than what we had in the in the in the callback uh, with a basic callback mechanism we can do better uh, because later on in the 2017 version of javascript and es8 they introduced a new syntax uh, basically to manage promises so we can generate and consume promises without uh, uh, explicitly managing the promise object no, without the new promise and these two keywords are um, async and await and they work together okay uh, in in synthesis async uh, trans uh, specify that the function will return a promise and not a normal value and so this function will be asynchronous then you can define the function uh, as a narrow function as a uh, anonymous, anonymous function as, uh, as expression as you want if you put the async in front of the function definition for example we have the async in front of an, of an arrow function definition we are saying that this function will return a promise so in this case it's just a string this string will be converted into a promise that fulfills uh, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, the return value of, of, of type string and inside an async function you can call the uh, you can use the await uh, instruction uh, so that when you call an async function uh, you can you can say that you can let's say call an async function in a synchronous context and javascript will stop automatically because it will understand uh, uh, the calling call let's see the details um, so first of all uh, to exploit the mechanism we uh, define any function as a sync and in this case uh, it will generate implicitly automatically a promise mm -hmm. so uh, the return statement for an async function will create a promise uh, an async function will immediately return a promise and then will be executed uh, when when possible uh, 
the event loop uh, will deal uh, as in a special way with async functions because uh, uh, they are an exception uh, um, normally a function uh, will be executed completely uh, inside uh, the, the event the, inside the call stack uh, until the function is finished we, it, its execution will be um, completed before uh, managing other events in this case it will be it can be suspended hmm? where synchronous functions can be suspended and uh, so that the the, um, the, um, the javascript interpreter can go on and uh, uh, execute some other code while the async function is is in a waiting state so this is very easy you just define any function like you do normally but with the async keyword in front of it and this will automatically be transformed into a promise hmm? uh, that will uh, execute this function uh, as the uh, normal fulfilled uh, value uh, and for consuming these promises this promise uh, we can use the await keyword await uh, is sort of then hmm? because uh, when you put await in front of a function and this function must be an asynchronous function must be an async function and uh, at this point the execution of this statement is stopped until this promise this async function which is a promise uh, is fulfilled so when you put a wait uh, you know that uh, the execution will stop here and wait uh, until the promise is fulfilled when the promise is fulfilled uh, then this expression uh, will get the return value from the promise and then use it in your program and you can go on hmm? uh, so this uh, uh, simplifies a lot uh, the normal case the normal case in which the uh, um, the promise is fulfilled so you don't have to call the resolve function you don't have uh, you just return a value you don't have to call the uh, then method you just await for the result so this is the normal case when the promise is fulfilled and what happens when the promise is not fulfilled well it's easy because uh, uh, in the case of a rejection uh, the await just uh, uh, will, will is converted into an exception so we'll throw an exception like a normal uh, javascript exception and will be of course thrown later on so the await this await expression will generate an exception an error uh, that can be catched by a try catch block normally uh, so, uh, some simple example just to better understand the mechanism uh, we have a function which is an async function here um, I, I declare this function to be a sync uh, and this function inside uh, can uh, call other promises so for example we have a function here that returns a promise we, we are creating a promise in the traditional way you can mix uh, await and async uh, as you want uh, because await and async are just shortcuts uh, for creating and consuming uh, uh, promises right so i have a promise here that is creating in the normal way uh, that calls it the resolve method after two seconds a very stupid promise and uh, i'm calling that in this function uh, so that I, I this function will print calling and then we get this result uh, will await for two seconds so this await function will block this function here it will not block the browser it will not block the execution because at this point uh, the await will uh, let the um, the browser continue to execute other javascript code process other events sooner or later after the two seconds this uh, timeout event will reach the event queue and uh, uh, the callback will call the resolve method so this promise is resolved and this await is unblocked it's unblocked so it will return the result and the result is this string result is the parameter the result of a promise of a fulfilled promise is the is the argument of the resolve function and so at this point uh, uh, we get here this string that can be printed on the console after two seconds so it looks like sequential code but in fact it's blocking here and by the way all of this will again uh, be a promise return every, it will be an asynchronous function because uh, it, it will not return immediately because when we call this function that function will return later because we know it can be blocked inside so itself uh, it's an asynchronous function so itself uh, it can return a new promise that 
we could wait in some case in this case we don't need to wait for the promise so uh, we could await here or we could uh, then after the call because uh, the result of this function is uh, it's a promise by itself mm -hmm. uh, so for example if you want to do something after this call we can intercept them with then because this uh, is a it's a promise again no? like i said before we could not write a console log here below here because if we write a, if you log something in the console here it will come out uh, uh what is that here in these two seconds in in the middle hmm? because uh, uh the asynchronous call will return immediately uh no sorry will be f uh, printed before everything else because the asynchronous function uh will be blocked here hmm? and so uh, the call will execute later immediately and will not await for uh, this other printout and so if you want to do something after so the end message will be printed here uh, i we, i need to wait uh, for the completion of the promise so either we use then or we put an an um, and uh, sorry an uh, await uh, uh, keyword before the asynchronous call so we would uh, then console.log of await async call hmm? there are two uh, equivalent way calling them or using await are equivalent creating promises and declaring async are equivalent okay um, we are have some uh, small comparison between how to create uh, some code uh, with working directly with the promises or working uh, implicitly with the async and await um, so for example we see that uh, uh, the then so we get we call the get api data which is a promise is a synchronous function that we imagine we get some data from a remote api and then we process the data that we receive uh, the same can be done uh, we know that this function returns a promise so we can just await for that there the two are totally equivalent the code on the right looks like synchronous code because it tells me that i will execute this function after the api is completed but uh, all the stopping and resuming the execution uh, is uh, done in parallel automatically and we don't need to manage it explicitly with the dem method so it's uh, exactly the same we don't have to define a callback just for doing something after uh, the result of the function mm -hmm. so it makes it uh, it's much simpler uh, let's not make any illusions the basic callback mechanism is still working here so just the callbacks are encapsulated into a promise so that they are more standardized uh, we use the then and the cache method for um, for distinguishing between good and bad execution and we use the chaining instead of the nesting but there are callbacks all the way down and then the promise um, object is simplified further by uh, through the async and await uh, keywords that uh, makes it then e makes it easier to create uh, a new promise um, async or to consume an existing pro uh, promise await hmm? so uh, the, the the mental model is still that of callbacks but the programming it will be more, much more fluent hmm? you have a second example here which is more or less the, of the same type we have a function uh, get data that we return uh, a promise uh, and this promise is uh, executed by calling get issue will probably return a promise and this when this promise is completed then we do something else and so so very similar to the example that we did before with the github issues and the same can be done here we have three function one two three and we need to process a second function by using a value that will return be returned by the first function and so at that point at this point uh, we need to wait uh, for the um, the completion of the first one and so we await for the result and then what we are doing here in the in the callback is just uh, the, the the next instruction because this instruction will be executed after the completion of the first promise and so on so it looks like synchronous code even if uh, the await keyword reminds us that really what we are doing is waiting uh, 
uh, a callback to be uh, to be returned by the way there are so, so some uh, um, some uh, easy uh, way of uh, uh, converting uh, uh, promises into async and await uh, that are built uh, into Visual Studio Code. So if, if you want, uh, it will also simplify your work. Um, um, okay, this is uh, just another example of the same uh, the same concept that uh, a chaining with await doesn't require anything special. It looks like a synchronous code. Uh, uh, but of course it's not synchronous uh, but uh, it looks like so it's much easier to to write and to process mentally okay so uh, there are two different mechanisms uh, that are uh, that are able to hide and wrap and simplify what the uh, callbacks are doing one is promises and the other async await uh, should we use promises or should we use uh, uh, await and async uh, well it depends uh, there are good use cases for both of them uh if you are if you need to explicitly manage the promises probably it's better to have explicit objects like for example you want to call promise all but while if you have a small function that do only a small chunk of uh, processing uh, uh, you can uh, uh, more normally more easily and more synthetically so you, you write less code uh, use a sync and await uh, but because in your mind there are still promises but uh, you, you write less code and you don't forget to call the catch and you don't forget to to change the banks and so on and that's so usually uh, we start today we start thinking in uh, uh, okay I have, I have an api that returns a promise so i await for the result that's it so as a consumer uh, we are it's more likely that we are consuming more promises than we generate uh, so the key uh, instruction is await for us uh, whenever we call uh, an asynchronous function we await for the result that's the you know the maybe the the shortest sentence i can write to summarize uh, all these uh, uh, new mechanisms okay of course uh, uh, these mechanisms are much more uh, evident uh, they will be used much more in the browsers when we we already know that some events uh, are uh, dealt asynchronously with callbacks uh, and uh, the next uh, uh, time we'll uh, develop something in the browser we'll know that the promises can be used to simplify when the problem becomes too complicated just to manage with, with a couple of callbacks so with bigger problems especially when we are waiting for external resources that will wait uh, will take a lot of time and so we need actually to execute something in many steps uh, uh, then the promises of course will be the, the right way to the right way to do that and so we have the we will use the language constructor there. Okay, thanks uh, for the moment, uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next uh, class. Thank you.